what comfort can you give in this process of how to kind of you know go through this loss of identity which means that you look very different or somewhat different to like those that are close to you right right yeah so when we go through shifts on this journey we can quite literally you know die and be reborn as, as a new person or sometimes there's no person that sort of is present. The personhood just falls away. The ego falls away. The identity falls away. And during this time, it can be a little awkward, a little clunky, um, because we don't really have an ego to use to interface with the world, with our relationships. Um, eventually, the, a new ego will reemerge and be reformed, but it will be more integrated. And because you've glimpsed beyond the identity, you no longer take this new ego to be who you really are, and you're able to wear it a bit more loosely than prior to the awakening process. So in this interim period, it can be a little awkward, a little clunky, and it can be kind of, you, we can stumble a little bit and it can cause some interesting friction uh, in our relationships and whatnot. Um, so for me on my journey, I always, whenever I had questions like this, I would always look to the lives of people that I recognize to be, you know, very advanced on the spiritual path. Not so much their teachings per se, but their lives. So I look at, say, Eckhart Tolle. This guy had an awakening. Then he changed his name, took the name Eckhart after Meister Eckhart, who was a great mystic. So I said, okay, he's taken a new name. It's, it's a new mask he's wearing. It's a new ego. He's like, he's reemerged as a new person. Okay, many, many great teachers, masters, sage, sages, whatever, they take a new name. So that, to me, said their prior self has fallen away, but they still needed some costume to wear in the world. And so they took on this, these new names. Not all of them take on a new name, um, but some do. Now, not saying that you have to change your name per se, Claire, but you can take a little bit of that idea and say, okay, I can reemerge mm -hmm. in some new form. And that new form doesn't have to be uh, a complete 180 from who you were. You can actually, with tact and with time and with maturity, be able to, in a sense, be a little bit of a chameleon. Now, I know this may feel like a huge um, blow to the parts of you that wants to feel authentic and be yourself and be true. And I understand this. However, I think that there are levels to this journey and levels at which we are able to meet people at. So for example, and we all do this, when you meet your partner, you're not the same as when you meet you know, your niece or your nephew who's like a two-year-old. You're a different person. You don't show the side of your niece or nephew that's you know, a person with a mortgage and a job and problems and all this stuff. We do it all the time, right? Yeah. I think the Japanese say that there's, you know, we have multiple masks. You have the mask at work, you have the mask with your parents, you have the mask with your partner, the mask with your friends. They're acknowledging it. So to me, this idea of being authentically yourself at all times, I don't really know what that is. I don't know. And I understand it's like a, an ideal that you want to be authentic. I, I get it. So one thing I, I know is that some great masters as well, very evolved, have great cities. I was just speaking to my mentor about something like this the other day. He said, some people, you actually have to learn to hide your, hide your cities, hide your powers. Because people will get freaked out. They may begin to, you know, you know, project all sorts of things onto you, worship you, get, get scared, all sorts of things. So you may have to just play incognito, be very innocent. You meet people where they're at. And, and we also see this with, with great masters, like spiritual leaders around the world. The Dalai Lama, for example, I was just speaking about Tibetan Buddhism. The Dalai Lama is very, very advanced spiritually, very advanced. But when he speaks to a large group, he's not talking about like the ins and outs of, of, you know, energy or chakras or Kundalini or, or reincarnation. He's just telling people, Hey, be kind, love one another. You know, that's all he's really saying. I saw Amma, the hugging saint also very advanced. She spoke to a room of a thousand people and I was kind of disappointed because I thought she was going to share some really advanced teachings, but instead she was just saying, Hey, everybody be kind, love one another, forgive, help the needy. I was like, Oh, okay. So you're able to meet people where they're at. So when you recognize that you're relating with somebody who can meet you in a, in a very high spiritual place, yeah, you can meet them from this place. But when you're meeting with somebody who's just, you know, sort of uh, focused on the mundane, 
you meet them there. And this is what comes with maturity as we navigate the path here. Very challenging, but in time, like Eckhart Tolle, for example, a new ego emerges and, and you'll you'll begin to navigate and it will it will become seamless. But this is a, a period where we all have to go through, which can be a little clunky. Um Traditionally, for some for some people, this is why they don't leave the monastery even after enlightenment. They just stay there, right? It's because they don't want to go back in the world and then, you know, put on these masks and walk around. So I hope that helps.